The charging system on four-cycle engines is relatively simple. Diagnosing problems in a charging system can be simple too. Follow a step-by-step -step procedure. We recommend the seven-step troubleshooting method. Step one, know the system you'll be working on. Take the time to study how it works. Step two, talk to the operator and get some specific details about how the tractor has been running. These details will help you identify and solve the problem. Step three, carefully inspect the machine. In many cases, wiring or connections are the cause of the problem. If you think there might be a problem in the charging system, look for broken wires and loose connections. Step four, operate the machine yourself. See if you have the same problems the operator described. You may find some other problems that need to be repaired. Step five, think about the problems you've identified. Then list some possible causes, either on paper or in your mind. Step six, come up with a plan of attack. Think about which part of the system would be best or easiest to look at first. Then what would be best to check next and so on. Step seven, carry out your plan. This step-by-step -step method will help you cover all possible causes. It will save you time, and it will help you do a more thorough repair job. In this program, we'll show you how to use the seven-step method to diagnose charging system problems on four-cycle engines. By the time you've finished watching this program, you'll be more familiar with the charging system. You'll also have some good ideas on how to diagnose problems and solve them. Let's start with step one. Know the system. This diagram shows all the components in a four-cycle engine charging system. Starting at the bottom, the magnetic flywheel ring, the stator, the rectifier regulator, the ignition switch, the ammeter, the circuit breaker, the solenoid, and the battery. A couple of points about this diagram. Some tractors do not have ammeters. Also, the solenoid is not actually part of the charging system. It is simply the connecting point for the wiring that goes from the circuit breaker to the battery. The magnetic ring on the flywheel rotates around the stator. This generates an alternating current. The rectifier regulator turns the alternating current into direct current. An alternating current will not charge the battery, only a direct current will. The rectifier regulator also controls the rate of charge and prevents the battery from overcharging. When the ignition switch is in the run position, current from the rectifier regulator flows to the battery and charges it. The ammeter measures the current flow through the system. The circuit breaker protects the electrical system from overload. Step two is talk to the operator. The main symptom you are likely to hear about is that the battery is too weak to start the engine. A few questions will help pinpoint the problem. Has the operator tried charging the battery off the tractor? Does the battery hold a charge? Does the battery lose its charge over a long period of time or does it run down quickly? Did the problem appear suddenly or did it slowly get worse over time? After talking to the operator, go to step three, inspect the machine. Start your inspection with the battery. Look for corroded terminals or loose connections. Loose connections and broken wires cause many charging system problems. Charging current passes through the ignition switch. Make sure there aren't any loose connections or broken wires here. Follow procedure in the tech manual to test the ignition switch too. Check the stator wires where they come out of the engine. Make sure the insulation is in good shape. Take a look at the rectifier regulator. Is the box cracked or broken? Check the terminals for looseness or corrosion. Use a continuity light to check the circuit breaker. The light should go on when you touch the two terminals. If it doesn't, you have to replace the circuit breaker. By fixing loose connections and broken wires and testing the circuit breaker, you will eliminate most possible causes of problems in the charging system. Continue with the seven-step method. Try running the machine yourself. 
crank the engine. Does it turn over slowly or not at all? If the engine turned over slowly or wouldn't turn over, try charging the battery with a battery charger. Find out if the battery will take and hold a charge. Keep in mind that mechanical functions like a faulty starter could also cause this symptom. After talking to the operator and running the machine yourself, you should know the symptoms. In step five, make a list of problems that could be causing those symptoms. Think about what the operator said as you make your list. If the problem appeared suddenly, a loose wire or broken component is the likely cause. If the problem developed gradually, the battery may be wearing out. With a list of possible causes, you can go on to step six, make a plan of attack. Decide which of the causes on your list is the most likely cause. One part of the system may be easier to check than the rest. Look at it first. Go on to step seven and carry out your plan. In the rest of this program, we'll give you some information you can use for steps five, six, and seven. We'll describe some common charging system problems with their possible causes. You'll also get some tips on the best ways to identify those problems. Step five tells you to list possible causes of the problems you find. Almost all charging system problems are caused by two basic conditions. Either the battery itself is faulty and won't hold a charge, or the charging system doesn't charge the battery because of faulty components. It's a good idea to test the battery first before checking the rest of the charging system. If the battery seemed weak, try charging it with a battery charger before testing it. There are three tests you should perform on the battery. You should give it a close visual check. Use a hydrometer to test for specific gravity and use a battery tester to perform a load test. Look for dirt on the battery. Excessive dirt can cause the battery to discharge itself. Clean the case. Look for cracks and breaks or damage to the terminals. Check the electrolyte. In extremely cold weather, the battery could be frozen. Do not charge a frozen battery. It could explode. If the electrolyte is low, add distilled water. Never add electrolyte to the battery. A dangerous chemical reaction could occur. Check your technical manual for details on how to use the hydrometer to perform a specific gravity test. Specific gravity indicates how well the battery is charged. There should be no more than 50 points variation between the battery's cells. The load test will tell you if there are any weak cells or warped plates in the battery. It will also indicate if the battery is capable of holding a charge over time. Follow instructions that come with the battery tester. Your technical manual will list specifications for the battery you're testing. If the battery is in good shape, test the charging system components. If you replace a faulty battery with a new one, you should still check out the charging system. You haven't eliminated possible problems in the system yet. There are two charging system tests to perform, the stator output test and the rectifier regulator operation test. You need an AC voltmeter, a DC voltmeter, and a DC ammeter to perform these tests. A volt ohm amp meter, or VOA, usually has all three meters in one unit. To perform the stator output test, remove the three-wire plug from the rectifier regulator. Connect the meter to the two AC leads. The AC leads come from the stator. The B plus lead goes to the ignition switch. Set the meter to read AC voltage. Check the technical manual to find the specification for unregulated stator output. Make sure the meter range setting is high enough to handle this voltage. Start the engine and run it at full throttle. The meter will show unregulated voltage generated by the stator. If the voltage is at or above the specification in the technical manual, the stator is in good condition. If the meter reading is below the technical manual specification, something is faulty. Check the stator, stator wiring, and flywheel magnets for damage. Replace faulty components by following instructions in the technical manual. 
To test the rectifier regulator, first reinstall the three-wire connector. You need to have a partially discharged battery to test the rectifier regulator. If the tractor's battery is fully charged, run it down by disconnecting the spark plug lead. Ground it with a JDM5 ignition tester to prevent the engine from starting. Crank the engine for 15 seconds, then let the starter cool. Repeat this procedure until the battery starts to weaken. To perform the rectifier regulator test, you need to measure DC voltage and current at the same time. Voltage is measured across the battery. Current is measured in series between the positive battery terminal and the B-plus terminal from the rectifier regulator. You can use a VOA meter to check both battery voltage and current. To check battery voltage, connect the VOA leads to the battery terminals. Set the meter for DC voltage. To check current, connect the VOA leads to the positive battery terminal and the wire going to the B-plus lead of the rectifier regulator. Set the meter for DC amperage. Start the engine and run it at full throttle. Check the meter readings every minute or so to see how well the battery is charging. Here's how voltage and current should read if the charging system works properly. The red line is current and the blue line is voltage. Current should start out at the level specified in the technical manual. The discharged battery should have a low voltage. As the battery charges, voltage should increase, reaching 13.8 to 14.7 volts. As the voltage increases, current should drop to near zero. Overcharging is one indication of faulty components. If the current stays high and the voltage goes beyond 15 volts, the rectifier regulator is defective. Replace it. Here's another possibility. The current stays at the level specified by the technical manual, but the battery voltage does not increase to 13.8 volts. This indicates that the battery is defective. Here the current is below specifications. The battery charges very slowly or not at all. Again, the problem is in the rectifier regulator. Repair any problems you find. Test the tractor before returning it to the customer. That covers all the procedures for troubleshooting a four-cycle charging system. Remember, checking for loose connections, broken wires, and worn-out insulation will solve a lot of charging system problems. Almost all other charging system problems fall into two categories a faulty battery, or a faulty component in the charging circuit. There are specific troubleshooting procedures for each category. The technical manual for the tractor you're working on will give you the information you need to perform these procedures. One final word of advice. If you have a charging system problem, don't rule out other systems. For example, an untuned engine that requires a lot of cranking to start could be wearing out the battery. The seven-step diagnostic method works with charging system problems as well as problems in other systems. By using it, you should be able to take care of a problem the first time you tackle it. With this method, you have the key to becoming a real pro.